Hi everyone, I am Dr. B. Ravi Kumar, Associate Professor, Department of PCA. In previous lecture, we have discussed full wave rectifier operation and analysis of full wave rectifier with the ripple factor and efficiency and peak inverse voltage. Now, I am going to discuss about bridge rectifier. How we move from half wave rectifier to full wave rectifier and again why we move for bridge rectifier. Let us see now why we move for bridge rectifier. This is the circuit diagram and circuit connections for bridge rectifier. If you see what are the components used in bridge rectifier and why it is called bridge rectifier. The components which are used in the bridge rectifiers are center tapped, uh, sorry, step down transformer and four diodes are connected in a bridge and four connected, four, di four diodes are connected in a bridge. So it requires one step down transformer and four diodes and a load resistor. And how to connect these uh, four diodes? If you see this diagram, why it is called bridge rectifier. The secondary coil of the transformer, secondary coil of this of this transformer connected to one uh, one sides of this uh, hands of our this edges of the bridge and opposite uh, diagonals points connected to load resistor which represent that the load resistor is connected to ground means simply which is represented with the load. So one opposite diagonal points is connected to load resistor other diagonal points connected to secondary coil of the transformer. So it will be just like a when we connecting in this way. So these, these look like a basic fundamental circuit of bridge of a network. So let us see now what is the operation of the bridge rectifier. So by because of this connection it will be says that it is a bridge rectifier. And if you see this diagram, the same diagram when we connect, when we expanding in horizontally. So whatever the point uh, secondary coil wire is connected to two diodes. Similarly here it is. And again this side secondary coil is connected to two diodes and this opposite uh, this two di these two diodes are and these two diodes are connected with the load resistor and the way of connecting this load resistor the numbers are when we observe these numbers the wires the upper hand of this bridge connected with the d1 and d3 and the lower hand connected with the D2 and D4. I am giving, so we are giving these names D2 and D4 and D1 and D3. There is a purpose to connect, uh, giving the names of these diodes D1, D3, D2, D4 because at one time, one series of diodes like D1 and D2 are connecting other time and D3, D4 are connecting. That's why we are connecting in a bridge like D1 and D3 in the upper, D2 and D4 in the lower hands of this bridge. Now coming to the operation of this bridge rectifier. The operation of the bridge rectifier by seeing this uh, graphical representation. When we see this uh, working of operation of this bridge rectifier, during the pass to off cycle of the secondary voltage. So here also we can take the operation of the bridge rectifier by considering two cases. One is what will be the operation of the pass to off cycle of the AC input signal and what should be the output of this bridge rectifier during negative off cycle of the AC input signal. So during pass to off cycle of the AC input signal or voltage, the diode, the pass to voltage, the pass to voltage, pass to off cycle of the AC input signal, 
the step down positive voltage available across the load A and the same positive voltage available across node B. So this way when a uh, uh, sorry negative voltage available across node B. During positive up cycle of the AC input signal, the positive voltage with respect to ground is available across the node A and negative potential available across the node B. So this positive potential which makes D1 is conducting because whenever this positive if it is positive, is positive voltage or positive cycle positive voltage or positive cycle across the D1 and D3, then it is connected to D1 is forward bias and D3 is reverse bias. So D1 is forward bias and D3 is reverse bias. When D3 is reverse bias, it is open circuit. Similarly, at the same time, negative potential at the point B, which makes the D4 is reverse bias and D2 is forward bias. Basically, the diodes are, shape of the diode is like this. The shape of the diode is like this. So, when during negative potential at point B, D1, uh, D4 is reverse bias open circuit, D2 is forward bias short circuit. So, during positive half cycle of the AC input signal, diode D1 and diode D2 are forward bias and conducting mode, but whereas in D3 and D4 are non-conducting or reverse biased. When D3 and D4 are reverse biased, no current flow through the D4 and D, D, D4 and D3 and only the current flowing through the this current flow direction through the D2 and load resistor and D2 and connect, connect back to secondary coil voltage. So when we see this di the direction of this current flow, the current uh, passing through D1 or D2 and secondary winding. So start here, one point positive potential passing through the current passing through the D1 and passing through the load resistor and then again D2 is forward bias conducting and connected to the negative potential. So that will be loop. So it will be like a loop. When passing through the plus point A and D1 and load resistor, the same whatever the instantaneous voltage, positive voltage passing through the load load resistor. So voltage across the load resistor will be same instantaneous output voltage. Similarly, during negative up cycle, during negative up cycle of the AC input signal, now it is actually P and diode, here it is N type here it is P type. So, during negative half cycle, negative potential, sorry, negative potential at point A and positive potential at a point B. When negative potential at point A, so this negative potential which makes D1, which is connected to P type, so makes reverse bias and D3, which is connected to N type, so which makes forward bias. Similarly, this positive potential at point B makes D4 which is connected to D4, which is connected to
So I'm drawing this one. When we're connecting, reverse bias and this forward bias. Reverse bias. So, during negative off cycle, during negative off cycle of the S input signal, so negative potential at point A and positive potential at a point B. When negative potential at point A, which makes P type which is connected to negative potential reverse bias and which makes this negative negative P type N type forward bias, it will act as a short circuit. Similarly, this plus voltage, plus potential across this node, this makes D4 is conducting and D4 is, D2 is not conducting, it will act as a open circuit. So, so that during negative off cycle, D3 and D4 are conducting and D3, sorry, during negative off cycle, T3 and D4 are conducting and D1 and D2 are not conducting, open circuit. So in this way, then the direction flow will start from, current flow start from point node B and passing through the node D4 and passing through the load resistor and passing through the D3 and connected to the minus terminal. So that it will, it will be look like a loop. Closed loop. Look like a closed loop. Even if you see this uh, uh, in a uh, the bridge bridge shape network, also we can see that. So in this way, simply we can say that during pass to off cycle, D1, D2 are conducting. D3, D4 are not, not conducting, current passing through the D1 through RL and D2. And during negative off cycle, D3 and D4 are conducting, D2, D1 and D2 are not conducting, only current passing through from plus B, D4, RL and D3 and negative terminal. So that we can see that pass to off cycle during pass to off cycle D1, D2, are conducting and that current flow through the load resistor, the similar instantaneous voltage measured at across the load, you will get the positive off cycle. During negative off cycle of AC input signal, D3, D4 are conducting and D1 and D2 are not conducting. D1 and D2 are not conducting. So, uh, due to D3 and D4, current passing through the load resistor so that you will get the same pass to instantaneous voltage measured across the load resistor. Similarly, it will be repeat for all cycles. So that what will be the time period for this full wave rectifier here is T by 2 only because what is the fundamental time period for S, S input signal is capital T, then time period is T by 2. Then time period is T by 2, automatically frequency is double. So the frequency of the bridge rectifier also is 2 into F. Now, one common point have you observed? You might have observed from this uh, output waveform of this bridge rectifier. So what will be the rectifier output for full wave rectifier? The same thing, same output. If it measured in omega t radians, so 0 to pi, 2 pi. So when we are giving 0 to pi, 2 pi kind of AC input signal, so we will get 0 to pi cycle, 0 to pi time period cycle we will get. So when we have similar type kind of shape of the rectified output uh, have got in the bridge rectifier, then you will get same on uh, same parameters you achieve. 
then what is the difference? What is the difference if you got a similar kind of output you achieved from bridge rectifier? So, for example, if you see the analysis of the bridge rectifier, so actually no need to derive all the parameters like VDC, VRMS, ripple factor efficiency, but we have seen that all the parameters have got same parameters in the bridge rectifier also. If you measure for the full wave rectifier output, the same output uh, here also in the bridge rectifier. So when we the similar image, similar waveforms achieve, then what is the VDC for bridge rectifier? You got 2 Vm by pi only. So 2 into Vm by pi. Whereas for when we consider the forward resistance of the diode, then 2 Vm by pi minus IDC into RF. Similarly, <laughs> <coughs> Similarly, VRMS is equal to Vm by root 2 only, which is what we have achieved in the full wave rectifier. Ripple factor, it has 0 0.83, 0 0.483, 48.3% of the ripple factor. Efficiency, PDC by PS into 100, you will get 81.2%. Then, what is the difference between bridge rectifier? parameters and a fully rectifier parameter there is the only parameter which change from the bridge rectifier with the full wave rectifier with the full wave rectifier peak inverse voltage vm only peak inverse voltage vm only when we see this diagram during pass stop cycle conducting connected with the load D2 conducting connected with the secondary coil point. So in this case what happened during D3 open circuit D4 open circuit in this case D4 open circuit D3 open circuit what is the peak inverse voltage? What is the reverse voltage? The maximum rated reverse voltage uh, without uh, destroying the diode operated with that diode in reverse bias voltage. So when the reverse voltage across this voltage, this uh, reverse bias diode, when we connecting this one, it is short circuit. That means this point, this point same. It is short circuit. This point, this point same. Ideally, so when these two points are same then D, D3 and D4 are connected in parallel. When these two are connected in, uh, like these two are short circuit, so this point, this point same, so D3 and D4 are parallel. In the parallel, the voltage is same, so whatever the voltage, reverse voltage across available across Vm, same reverse voltage available across D4. So that peak inverse voltage per in the bridge rectifier, the advantage by connecting as a bridge, the re reverse maximum reverse voltage or peak inverse voltage in the bridge rectifier is Vm only. So the Vm is the maximum peak inverse voltage. That is the difference from full wave rectifier. And here the frequency is F into is equal to 2 into F5. This is the analysis of bridge rectifier. Then comparison of rectifiers based on the performance parameters which is listed in this uh, table. So, so far uh, we have discussed the half wave rectifier, full wave rectifier and bridge rectifier. Dear students are you with me? So, yeah, when we see this table, is where by, by seeing this table we can conclude that. So, what will be the uh, result from these rectifiers? By seeing this table, we can decide that which rectifier is useful for practical applications. So every time when we have seen that analysis of the particular electronic circuits, then by seeing the final analysis, then we can decide that this is useful for a particular application. So here, the three rectifiers of your full view and bridge rectifier, 
and these are the parameters in uh, in the vertical uh, direction so first we will see that vdc dc voltage we have seen that half wire rectifier we got vm by pi in full wire rectifier 2 vm by pi so the waveform of the rectifier output and bridge rectifier output and full wire rectifier same so that we have received we have measured same dc voltage 2 vm by pi vrms we measured in a half wire rectifier vm by 2 and here vm by root 2 vm by root 2 and peak inverse voltage just now we have seen in half wire rectifier vm one diode the, the maximum reverse voltage across the diode is vm but in the full wire rectifier we have connected in series of two diodes so in series we measure voltage in uh, voltage is added so vm for one diode and v2 is other diode so we got two vm per full wire rectifier whereas in bridge rectifier again we have the gradient are equal to vm only because of each time two diodes are connected in parallel so voltage is same so vm ripple factor in half wire rectifier 1.21 maximum ripple achieved in the half wire rectifier so we never use in practical application our aim is in the power supply block mode so this is the one of the heart of the circuit of the rectifier when we use half wire rectifier so what is the what does it mean that to achieve the dc comp, dc output at the load so not at all useful for to rectification this half wire rectifier when we prefer to rectify from rectify for AC input signal to the DC, DC output signal. Same rect uh, ripple factor for full wire rectifier 0 0.483, 48 percent, 0.483, 48 percent, and efficiency only 40% efficiency. And here we got 81.2, 81.2. And frequency input frequency is F5. So the same frequency we get uh, in half wire rectifier because this is the input uh, frequency when the half hour rectifier one half cycle and zero total time period is same and frequency is also same and whereas in full wire rectifier we have 2 into f5 and bridge rectifier we have 2 into f5 Now we will see here comparison of rectifiers by seeing different uh, uh, by seeing the significant parameters a summary parameters what is the comparison of rectifiers when we see this advantages of half wave rectifier over full wave rectifier so in the examinations they are they, they ask that whether the students have known that which rectifier is good for a practical application or not. So if you see here, advantages of half wave rectifier over full wave rectifier. Half wave rectifier is actually basic circuit, simple circuit, which requires only one uh, like one, one diode and a transformer. So it is a simple circuit and it requires only single diode. Now what will be the peak inverse voltage for? the single diode is vm only so these are the advantages of half wave rectifier over full wave rectifier and coming to the disadvantage of the half wave rectifier what is the disadvantage of half wave rectifier half wave rectifier have high ripple factor which is equal to 1.21 high ripple factor and low efficiency only 40 percent efficiency when compared with this uh, Disadvantage is the advantage of half wave rectifier has dominated very less. The advantage of half wave rectifier is not at all benefit for the practical circuits. Then advantage of center tapped full wave rectifier over half wave rectifier. If you move to, if you shift this half wave rectifier to full wave rectifier, what will be the advantage? The advantage of the full wave rectifier is we achieved high efficiency, we achieved low ripple factor, 
as we goes on to as we move to half wave rectifier okay the ripple factor the ripple factor is gets reduced now our aim is also mean like that when we move to half wave rectifier to full wave rectifier so the ripple factor gets reduced so how much value it means so it gets only from 1.21 to 0.4 for it 48 only 48 so in order to uh, reduce this ripple factor we improve this dc component that is what we expect that is what we require in in the adapter in the charger so we need to convert this pure ac signal into pure dc signal so in order to do we achieve the reduction in the ripple factor so that's why the advantage of this center tap to full wave rectifier or half wave rectifier is ripple factor is very less ripple factor reduced compared with the half wave rectifier and high efficiency 81 percent efficiency improved and coming to now question is so we have improved in the ripple factor we have improved in the efficiency then why we go for bridge rectifier so that is what we have seen in this advantages of bridge rectifier over full wave rectifier so in this bridge rectifier we use normal transformer one normal tra step down transformer and four p injection diodes let us take one simple example for example the cost of center tap transformer which is used in the full wave rectifier is 200 rupees and the cost of two diodes which are used in the full wave rectifier is for example 20 rupees each diode cost of 10 rupees so total is 20 rupees so one transformer 200 plus two diodes 20 rupees 220 rupees for designing a full wave rectifier and uh, when we go to the bridge rectifier so this bridge rectifier require only normal transformer so it is a cost of simply 50 rupees normal transformer and the cost of four diodes in the bridge rectifier where is we have four diodes four into five 20 rupees or four into 10 40 rupees so 50 plus uh, 40 90 rupees so when we compare with this 90 rupees under uh, the cost of full wave rectifier design 240 rupees when we compare with this 90 rupees and 240 rupees so it is very we have we reduced uh, huge uh, uh, amount of rupees so a lot of change in this cost of the rupees of uh, designing a rectifier we have received the same amount of dc voltage same amount of ac voltage and uh, ripple factor is same efficiency is same we achieved 81 percent of ripple uh, efficiency in the bridge rectifier so we received the same advantage of all factors uh, in the bridge rectifier with the cost of 90 rupees so what we what is the meaning of that uh, 240 rupees with the same amount of ripple factor and efficiency so that is the big difference and what is the best advantage of bridge rectifier so in order to reduce the cost of the circuit of circuit to achieve the 81% um, of rectification 81% of efficiency of the rectified circuit with the full wave bridge full wave center tap to full wave rectifier so in the bridge rectifier we achieve the same amount we achieve the same factors so same dc component same efficiency with the car with a very less cost so that's why avoid the center tap transformer in the bridge rectifier so center tap transformer is not required in the bridge rectifier to achieve the same parameters and the peak inverse voltage is vm only whereas in full wave rectifier the peak inverse voltage is 2 vm in this case vm only but disadvantage is of the bridge rectifier is it need four diode compared with the two diodes which are used in the full wave rectifier so this uh, uh, need of four diodes compared with the two diodes maybe uh, it is a disadvantage but it is negligible so it is a minute disadvantage when compared with the cost of full wave rectifier so the use of the four diode instead of two diodes but we remove this center tap transformer we used a simple normal transformer so that's why so 
nevertheless this is a it has a, a minor disadvantage disadvantage but a, a good advantage is to overcome this senate of transformer so that's why by studying half wave rectifier by studying full wave rectifier and by studying bridge rectifier can we conclude that in practical application in any practical adapter or in any practical charger or in we need to convert that ac signal to dc signal the second important uh, circuit is rectifier in this rectifier now prefer this uh, bridge rectifier yes it's true so by studying all these rectifiers so we can conclude that bridge rectifier is the best rectifier for practical application of circuit which is useful for converting ac signal to dc signal so the purpose of this rectifier is to conclude that this bridge rectifier is useful for practical application so that's all so this is what so far we have studied what is operation of half wave rectifier and operation of full wave rectifier and operation of bridge rectifier so in any practical applications we used bridge rectifier so in when we open any old charger uh, for mobile charger then open it so the immediate of this small transformer winding transformer immediately there will be a, a four diode connected in a diagonal or four connectors are connected in bridge rectifier bridge bridge uh, model so the, because what we have studied so far so bridge rectifier have a advantage major advantage compared with the half wave and full wave rectifier so that's why so from this topic we can conclude that bridge rectifier is the best rectifier for practical applications thank you so much like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates